More than two years on from the largest case of massive unrest in modern British history, we are back in Tottenham where the unrest began. I'm standing just metres away from where Mark Duggan was fatally shot and killed by police on August 4th, 2011. Tottenham is currently undergoing major regeneration and we want to find out how this is benefiting the local community. I've lived in Tottenham for like 30 years and after the riots, there has been money coming into the area for regeneration, but the problem is who gets control of that? And I would say it's going to be big business and the council who are going to control what happens around here and local people just are not getting any say on how that money should be spent or what's really needed. It shouldn't be at the expense of local commerce. It shouldn't be at the expense of local entrepreneurs. It shouldn't be at the expense of people that currently live here. Tottenham's full of a lot of great people, um, a lot of people that are willing to help, let's say youth workers especially, and um, we've got a great community of youth workers and despite there being no youth clubs for the past how many years, they are still there working hard. We need to bring things into the area which enhances individuals, I mean things like apprenticeships, other things that sort of says, you know what, we're giving young people quality so that they can go into the working environment and actually be able to secure a job. It's nice to have a Costa and it's nice to have a Sainsbury's but is that really going to benefit young people especially in the area? I don't think so. Another major contentious issue specifically in Tottenham is deaths in police custody. We're about to speak to Deborah Coles, co-founder of Inquest, to ask what impact this has. Tottenham has an extremely disturbing history of deaths in police custody and four of the most shocking are those of Cynthia Jarrett, Joy Gardner, Roger Sylvester and Mark Duggan. The lack of accountability and justice for families following deaths in custody has had a profound impact on communities. The aftermath of the riots hasn't been purely negative. Many young people and youth organisations have used the unrest as a catalyst for positive social change, just like our organisation, Fully Focused. Since the riots, I've noticed the unity of youth and youth organisation. They now come together and host events and, and projects. They can push their voice now and now they're heard. Yeah, there are a lot of positive things that happen like, within every project and they help other young people see their positive sides. But the bad thing is that government is just cutting, cut, cut, cuts, cuts. And what are young people meant to do if projects such as WAC, like where we are now, are getting cut? Croydon is another borough that was heavily affected by the riots. We're here to speak to Charlene, who lost everything she owned when her home was burnt down. We feel let down by the council because they were given a load of money to help the right victims and regenerate London Road. Nothing's been done, yet they're building a shiny new Westfield building. There's been no facilities put in place for the youths around here and all the youth centres have been closed down that were here, so there's nothing for them to do. It is clear that two years on, both young people and communities are coming together to rebuild, and move on. The feeling is, however, that the government isn't doing nearly enough to support this. 